Hey, a classic song by Neil Young, Sugar Mountain, and everybody knows it. It's a great song to play uh, at your next gathering. Now, it's a real simple song. If you were to Google this, you're going to find all kinds of artists that have done it, and they all put their own sort of, well, their own spin on it, right? They make it their own, and they do that at the beginning and in the middle, like turnarounds that we that I played there. Um, on that F, which was the D chord, or D shape. And look, there's, we're going to attack it a few ways, all right? And I'll show you that stuff after. But it's a real simple song to play. You only need three chords. And those are G, F, and D minor. Okay, now, if you want to be Mrs. Professional, Okay, and you want to play your F bar chord, your G bar chord, and your D minor, you're more than welcome to do that. Right? I'm going to play it open, and one of the reasons for playing it open is the, 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 the little movement I need to get from G to F to that D minor and back to G. Okay. It all falls in line with my theory of little as possible movement in my chord changes, right? So the song is basically four on the floor, right? So it's four, one, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, F, two, three, four. Then there's the D minor, one, two. The lyrics in that part there, eh, you got to kind of, you got to play with the lyrics a little bit. So the first time in the D minor, it kind of stays there a little longer. And then the second time, though you may have left too soon, right? Then we head off into that turnaround. Now, as an absolute beginner, you don't do that. You can just stay on the C. Take your time, recoup. There's some noise at the fair. We start all over again. Da, 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 da. We do the same thing over again. If you want to, in fact, I would suggest you start that way. It's the easiest way. Now, my theory on things like this is you start the easiest way possible. And once you have confidence and some ability, then you start putting some brain into it and thinking, Oh, okay, now if I went, oh, yeah, that's, that's just me, the way, my, it's the way I learned this. What I don't like is having to be note for note, uh, strum, everything has to be perfect. To me, that's just not for me, okay? Uh, I'm a freewheeler, and I like to make things my own, but I still like them to sound the way they should. Um, but I don't like to get overly fancy, and make sure, like, I don't beat myself up because I didn't pick the right note at the right time in the song. Put it that way, right? So this song gives us all kinds of room for creativity. So what we'll do now is we'll look at, again, the four on the floor is the timing. And we'll look at the little strum. Now, when I play songs, I tend to change my strumming in the song. It, you know, it, it depends on the verse, the chorus. And when I'm singing, a lot of times I really dumb it down to just downstrokes. And two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, right? The strum that I was doing... was like a up, down, up, down, and then I would... sometimes I would 
pick that note, I have my pinky on the G note, which is third string of the high E, because that goes, that note G goes with the G chord and the F chord, right? So it'll all work. And I hit it sometimes just as a little embellishment. So what I'll do there is up, down, 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 up, down. But the important thing is, in your mind, in your head, what you think sounds right. The rule of thumb, for me, recovers is when you are playing an instrumental cover, you got to put in all the little bits and pieces because you need to, people are listening to that song and they've got to identify it. You're not singing. So the more little bits and pieces you can put in there, like the record, Okay? But when you're singing it or someone else is singing it, the guitar basically becomes background, background track, right? And everyone's keying on your vocals. So remember that, right? It takes the pressure off having to play note-for-note note guitar songs. So we've got the strumming, and we've got the basic tempo of the song, okay? And we know the chords, G, F, and D minor, and that's it, right? So let's run through it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Da, 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 do, G, two, three, four. D minor, three, four, two, three. Now, again, as a beginner, we can keep going. Is it fun at the fair? Or let's look at those little riffy things that we did. Two, I did two types of them just to show you. Because again, when you Google this, you're getting all kinds of stuff. So you might, hey, you might as well put your own spin on it as well. So the way I opened the song was I played a C shaped D chord. So that's my C, slid up two frets. And all I did was I sort of just play those last three or four strings. That's it. No real order. But what I try to do is repeat something. So if I do this, I'll try to do that every time, okay, for continuity. If I do this, I'll do it every time. Then we slide up to the C, or down to the C, same thing, G, Won't you live on? right, and we start the song. Now, that other little riff that I did, right, was coming out of the D minor, back to the G, same thing, I just picked out the treble strings, then back to the G. In the noise at the fair, anyone da, do, do, do. Right? Okay, so let's analyze those two for a second. So the first riff, D, even though it's not a D major, it's a D chord. We got two D roots here, one on the ring finger, one on the pointer finger. It's a D. Right? Well, there's no D in the song, but there is a D minor, and D works well with G and F. They're all kind of, you know, they're all buddies, so it's going to work. And then the C, well, there's no C in the song. However, C, G, and F are all from the, the key of C. And there's a G and an F, so the C is going to fit right in there too. So, you know what? And Neil does this a lot, right? So on a lot of his songs, he'll come way up here. And he'll, he'll do that quite a bit. So it's sort of a trait of his. So, you know, going here, now that's a D shape, right? And if you remember the video, we went from D, two shapes up is an E, and then one, or one, uh, two frets up, I mean, and then one would be your F, right? Now there's an F in the song. So that would work. So really, both of those work. It's just a matter 
in my opinion, personal preference, okay? So, again, what I do when I play this song is I open with this little riff here. Bold to live on, right? I do that. And then when I come off of my D minor, G, two. Then I start again. Da -da -da, da -da -da. And that's it. That is that classic song in a nutshell. So again, don't worry about getting hung up on things like what notes do I pick? Uh, what I mean, look, you're playing the right chords, okay? So you're on the right track. If you don't want to do any of those fancy things, you don't have to. You just stay on that G, right? So out of the D minor, give yourself as long as you want. Sounds good, right? So. You know, come up with your own little thing. Come up with your own little riff to play. Uh, but again, a classic song. Um, I don't think you can go wrong learning this. And for those of you, now, don't get hung up on trying to recreate Neil's voice too because it is distinct, right? I mean, it's, it's out there. And a lot of times with him, he plays with his tuning a little bit to match his voice. So if you play right up against the record, of his, you might sound a bit off because he might have one or more of his strings tuned down or up or, you know, to give it that sort of edge to match his voice, right? But G, F, and D minor, as you heard, sound pretty good. So I hope you have fun with this. If you like what you heard, I got all kinds of videos in my library. Um, moving forward, if you think I can help you play some good beginner's guitar, uh, hit subscribe, and that way you will always see my latest videos. I post often. And that's really about it. I thank you for your uh, ongoing support. Uh, I try to respond to all messages. So if you have any comments, suggestions, whatever, let me know of your progress. Send it along. Love to hear it, right? So until the next time, Remember this, that it's all about the practice. See you soon.